This is one of a series of talks I've done about the Clay Millennium uh, prize problems, the million dollar prize problems. And this one's about the Birch and Swinnerton Dyer conjecture. And I, was, I call it Beyond Fermat's Last Theorem, uh, thinking of this as a natural successor to Fermat's Last Theorem, which was proved in the, in the 1990s. Um, as usual with these talks, this is for a general audience, and I'm not aiming for a lot of precision or rigor, and so I'll sweep a bunch of things under the rug, and often I aim for just a general idea of what's going on rather than precision. Nonetheless, uh, note these acknowledgments. A great book by Neil Koblitz and uh, some great talks I've seen by Dick Gross, Joe Harris, and Bill McCallum on this and related topics. Uh, and there's other people I should probably uh, note, but those are the, the ones that come to mind. So, triangles, elliptic curves, and the Birch and Swinnerton conjecture. Well, let's start with triangles. Let's start with a simple geometry problem. Can we find a right triangle whose side lengths are fractions, that is, rational numbers, and whose area is 6? Hmm. Okay. Well, let's see. Why would that be a hard problem? Well, it really, I don't think it should seem like a hard problem. Um, but it's surpri it is surprisingly hard uh, to do this in general. Now, with the number six, it's not going to be super hard. But let's see why it might, what's involved with it and why it might be hard. Here's the two key equations that we need to know here. One is the theorem of Pythagoras, that the square of A plus the square of B is the square of the hypotenuse. The sum of the squares of the legs of the triangle is the square of the hypotenuse. And then the other one is just the formula for the area of a triangle, one-half base times height. When it's a right triangle, it's just a half times one leg times the other leg. So I want this number, big A, the area, to be 6. And I want to find three numbers that satisfy these equations. So let's see what's going on. Let's just try to guess. Let's try A equals 2 and B equals 6. I, that's a good guess for the area because one-half times 2 times 6 is 6. That's the number I wanted, that's okay. But it's not good for making it a rational right triangle where the side lengths are supposed to be rational numbers, just fractions of whole numbers. Because when I put in it into Pythagoras, I have to have c squared equal to 40. And the square root of 40 is not a rational number. This is not a perfect square. It's between 36 and 49, not a perfect square. That's what's hard about this. It's not getting the area right, it's getting the area right and having that hypotenuse come out as a perfect square of a, a rational number. So there is a solution to this one. If we try 3 and 4 for a and, and b, then the area works out. 1 half times 12 is 6. And c squared is 9 plus 16 is 25. That is a square. c equals 5. That works. So a 3, 4, or 5 triangle solves this particular problem, where the area is required to be 6. Now, what about? if we want the area to be 1.5. Usually we're going to be interested where this is a, an integer, a whole number, but we can certainly ask it where this is a fraction. Let's see what we can do. Well, the nice thing here is that 1.5 is a quarter of the previous area. And a quarter is a really nice number because it's a square of 1 half. If we use 1 half of the previous lengths, if we put it, make this half as big and this half as big, the area will go down by a quarter. So we can take that example we already had, the 3, 4, 5 example, and scale it down to get something uh, that will satisfy this. So in other words, we take 3 halves and 4 halves, or 2. The area, of course, has to work out. 12 over 8 is 1.5 is what we wanted. And the C just scales down by a factor of 2 as well. If I scale down two sides of a, of a triangle, and I leave all the angles the same, I'm just going to scale down the third side by the same factor. So it's certainly going to be rational. It's not an integer anymore. Not, only two of them are, or only one of them is an integer, but that's okay. We just wanted uh, rational numbers to be the side lengths, and we get our desired area. Well, maybe we can just get all numbers from that process. Maybe this is a trivial problem. Once we get one, uh, the six, maybe we can just create anything. Well, what about if we try to do it with three? What if we tried to s just use the scaling trick and not find a new shape triangle, but just the three, four, five triangle scaled up or down? Well, this is one half the previous area. In order to use the scaling trick, we would have to use one over root two of the previous lengths. That's where that's going to mess up. So at least that strategy doesn't seem to be working for three. 
But it does tell us, this strategy does tell us a lot about the problem. It tells us the first place to look at is Pythagorean triples. Those are right triangles with integer sides, not just rational numbers, but integer sides. These guys will all have integer areas. Well, it, it's clear that at least at least a half integer area, but in fact, with the Pythagorean triple, at least one of these numbers, well, exactly one of these two sides has to be even, it turns out. And so you're going to get a bunch of different integers from these examples. So 3, 4, 5 is a famous one, 5, 12, 13, 7, 24, 25, 9, 40, 41, that's a little less famous. There's an infinite number of these. There is a pattern, and I'm going to discuss that in a little bit. Um, for, so for any one of these, these create lots of examples of solutions to these various problems where the, um, the area is various different integers. So for example, this has area 6, this has area 30, this has area 84, this has area 180. Well, let me use this one to solve another problem. Suppose, we don't, I don't see the number 5 anywhere on this list, for example. And we're not going to get that. This is the smallest Pythagorean triple. It's pretty easy to see that, um, or to show that. It's not shouldn't be obvious. Um, so I'm not going to get area 5 out of a straight-up Pythagorean triple. Does that mean it's impossible? Well, look at this 180. And if we look at 180, how that factors, that's 5 times 36. That's 5 times 6 squared. So that means if we take this guy and do the scaling trick, if we scale it down by a factor of 6, this area will become 5. Uh-huh. OK. So a 9 over 6 and 40 over 6 and 41 over 6 triangle will have an area that's 180 over 36, and that's 5. And these are clearly rational numbers. So by scaling down Pythagorean triples, we can get solutions to these problems. The problem is, if I choose this number first, it's not clear if I'm ever going to find something that works on this list of triples. And the other thing to note, so here's the here's 9, 6, 46, and 41, 6 written out as not as improper fractions, but as mixed numbers. We had to search up pretty far for to get area 5. To get area 6, it was just a 3, 4, 5 triangle. It was really simple. To get area 5, we actually had to search up to where we used numbers as big as 41 in our fractions. What if we had some other integer area we wanted? 3, for example, because we haven't found one for 3 yet, or 4, or 7, or 11, or 24, or 156. How far would we have to search? We're not, it's not at all clear. How complicated would the fractions have to get? For example, let's count the number of digits. And suppose we, fit, we pick a, a particular number that we want to, for the area that we want of our triangle, and we start searching. Suppose we just haven't found one after searching for a while. How would we know that we're done, that we, have, we, we cannot find something? So here's an interesting one. n equals 157. So that's going to be us, our area. Um, I, maybe I, could, I should call it a like I listed before. This is the area, the desired area. Here's what I can tell you about this. If you tried with a computer searching all fractional sides, all rational number sides, and you're allowed to use up to 20 digit numbers in both the numerator and denominator of all of these sides, you will not find one with this exact area. And it seems ridiculous that you should have to search further. It just seems like probably there's nothing. Maybe you should be, you should be able to prove that there is no way to create a rational sided right triangle with this area. Well. That is a rational sided right triangle with area 157. This is straight out of Koblet's book, by the way, although uh, he credits it to, uh, uh, oh, I can't remember right now. Um, so this is a unbelievably complicated fraction. This is super complicated. This is super complicated. They're not huge numbers, though. They just, if I multiply this times this times a half, I get exactly the integer 157. And this is in fact, a, uh, a rational right triangle with that desired area. So this tells us that these numbers can get pretty scary big. So the, efficient, the official name for this is the, what's called a congruent number problem. A congruent number is um, an integer that can be the area of a right triangle with rational sides. And so, for example, we can ask ourselves the question, can we find a right triangle whose side lengths are fractions, rational numbers, and whose area is 1, 2, or 3, or 4? And the answer is no. And so 1, 2, and 3, and 4 are not, are not congruent numbers. 5 and 6 we've seen are. 157 is, I just showed you, although that took a, a lot of work 
to display that, even even to display it, much less to find it. Um, and so, but let's go back to this claim, like the claim that one is not a congruent number. It's known that it's not, but you can't just show show it by trying to find some triangles and then giving up. You can't show it by brute force. You need a better strategy. Okay. Here's a list of the first few congruent numbers. One, two, three, and four are not congruent. Five and six are. We've seen that. And here's the first few in a list. And you'll see I've bold-faced some of them. They're all congruent, all the, everything on this list. But I bold-faced some of them. And you might want to pause the video for a second if you want to see if, see if you can find the pattern in the bold-faced ones. If you look at these triples, 5, 6, 7, then 13, 14, 15, then 21, 22, 23, then 29, 30, 31, if you look at that, they just go up by 8s. And so, in fact, these are all the things that are a multiple of 8 plus 5, 6, or 7. So here's 8 plus 5, 6, 7. Here's 16 plus 5, 6, 7. Here's uh, 24 plus 5, 6, 7, etc. And it keeps going. That's one pattern that exists in congruent numbers. And, but then there's these other ones. It's not just exactly those numbers. And so that's interesting. There's some tantalizing patterns, but there's more to it. It's complicated. So if you're 5, 6, or 7 more than a multiple of 8, you're congruent. And among many other examples, and even that simple pattern, even though it's simple to see it once you have the numbers, that's a hard one to prove. And the rest of it was mysterious for centuries. I mean, there was definitely progress. There were people thinking about this. But I think that's a pretty accurate way to... Uh, to characterize it, that there was there's a lot of mystery to this problem, and it's it goes back all the way to the Greeks. For example, the fact that one is not congruent that was proved way back by Fermat of Fermat's Last Theorem fame, and in fact, it's equivalent without an incredible amount of algebraic work to a special case of Fermat's Last Theorem. It's not obvious, and I won't go through the details of this this thing. I'll, I'll talk about. Uh, a more general transformation that gives you different algebra in, in, a little, in a minute. But you can massage the congruent number problem for area one into trying to find three different numbers. They're not a, b, and c. They're related, but they're different numbers, x, y, and z, so that x to the fourth plus y to the fourth equals z e to the fourth. And Fermat's last theorem says that can't be done unless this exponent is two, which is the Pythagorean triple problem. You can't solve this with x, y, and z being integers. And um, in fact, this was one of the cases that Fermat himself knew how to prove and proved of this, this statement. So there's, this is a nice link between Fermat and this problem. They're really very uh, closely related in some cases. It's a good uh, place to stop the first video.